Hey, I wanted to switch things up a little bit here and get away from the UiPath if-then activities and instead do a little example with the UiPath switch statement. So I'm going to create a, a new project here. I'm going to call it the UiPath switch example. Create this. Uh, when the main workflow pops up, I'm going to drag a switch activity onto the sequence. So I'm going to head over to the activities tab do a little search for the switch activity, drag it on, and there it is. Now, how does the switch activity work? Well, it allows you to do conditional logic, but it's used when there's multiple branches off of a particular property. So with an if-then-else statement, typically you have a property and there's two branches, You know, one if it's true, one if it's not true. But with a, a switch, you might have a property where you might do two, three, or four different things depending on what the value is. So let's just imagine you wanted to play a sport, okay? And you invited a bunch of your friends over, you wanted to create a sports team, and six of your friends show up, okay? Well, with six people, you can put together a hockey team. Imagine you had 11 people. Well, you could put together a cricket team. If you had 15 people, well, I guess you could put together a hurling team. Okay, so as you can see, it's not as simple as an if-then statement. There's not two branches. There's multiple branches. So let's do that little example here. How would we do that with a switch statement? Well, the first thing you might want to do is just create a variable on which the switch will occur. So I'll call it players. I'm going to make the variable type int because it's a number, although you can use a switch with a string or a boolean or an int32 value as well. The scope will be for the sequence. And hello India, we will have 11 people show up to play this game. So you can see the default value is 11. So on the switch statement, we would specify the property that we're switching on. So we're going to switch on the number of players. And you've got this option to add a new case. There's a default. So, you know, what do you do, you know, if none of the conditions match? We're going to have a default. I'm not going to have a default here. But I'm going to add a case where if I've got 11 players, well, I want to add a little message box that says, hey, we are playing cricket. Now, of course, we know that the value is 11. But what happens if 15 people show up? So we can add a new case for the number 15. And then I guess we could just drag a message box in there and I said, and it'll say, it looks like we are playing hurling. I love hurling. Okay, and of course I'm Canadian, so I'm not Indian, I'm not Irish, I'm Canadian. So I guess I got to deal with the case where there is six players. So I'll add a new case here. We've got six players, and of course, what are we gonna play if we've got six players? Well, I guess we're gonna play hockey. We've got uh, three on the ice plus the goaltender, so we are playing hockey. And I guess this is just one side of the team. We're gonna to have to have another six players show up so that we can play against somebody, but um, I think you get an idea of how this works. Um, I guess maybe I should add something for my Korean friends too. Why don't we put uh, uh, two in here and maybe we can play Let's, should it be apostrophe S? Let's, let us play ping pong. I don't know, something like that. Okay, but you can see that the default value is 11 here. So that's what the number of players is that we've got. So I'm just going to run this file and it should say, hey, 11 players, we are playing cricket. Okay, but what if I change this value to 15? Well, all of a sudden, It says, looks like we are playing hurling. Um, now, what happens if I just change this to three? Now, notice that there's no value that matches three. Two, six, five, 11. I've changed this to three. What happens if I run this? Nothing happens because nothing matches. So that's where the default comes in. If uh, you specify a default, that can handle any value that doesn't match one of the cases. So right here, well, if they give us a number that doesn't match exactly, we can just say no exact match. Why don't you all go surfing? <laughs> okay. So there you go, no match, why don't you all go surfing? So 
And here we can do it. And if uh, we'll change that number up a little bit, go down to variables. Well, the number is three. That's not going to match. So we'll run the application. And we don't have a good match on the team player. So we say no exact match. Why don't you all go surfing? And there you go. That is the basic and the fundamentals of the UI path switch statement with an int value. I may actually show you how to do this with a string value in one of the next tutorials, but get used to that. Get used to the idea of the cases, get used to the expression, get used to the default case, because you will be tested on all of those things on the UI path associate certification exam. So if you do want to get UI path certified, this is an important thing to know.